The sheriff told me on the way up here this morning, he called me about that case. and said that fellow had been deported six weeks ago. That's my problem with all this. I'm willing to work with any of you to make it easier and better in the, in the, uh, the process, but you can't change the process until you change the way people are coming here. I want to know that you're here to work and who, where you're from, and that you're not in the drug cartel, and that you're not a murderer and a rapist and a terrorist. All the bywords and people say, well, you're just making scare tactics. Well, that, that could be true, but I've personally have been there. Uh, the question is for Mrs. Wong. Uh, let's talk about unskilled immigrants. Uh, I believe the prevailing wage in Mexico is well under $1 an hour. Uh, the minimum wage in the United States is above $7 an hour. Isn't there every incentive for people from other countries such as Mexico to come to the United States? And where do you draw the line? Uh, how many undocumented people should we let over? Should there be any restriction? Immediately document them and shortly after give them citizenship? What if conditions in this country are poor and we can't absorb those people in the labor force anymore. Uh, can they be sent back? Or what, uh, how would you propose that this be handled? And I'm glad you raised that question. I think the common, and it's also in my book, the common misunderstanding, as the panel put out, is that we are trying to encourage everybody to come to America and pay them $7 when it's only $1 overseas. And also, we do agree with the sheriff and Mr. Combs that these people should not be over. That's why absolutely we need to be, have enforcement by the border. And that's why I raised that question. It's, we need it. There's no question about that. But what I'm saying is for people who's already here, and for that 40% of that, those people who came legally and became out of status, or who were ordered deported but never got noticed that they had a final order of deportation, suddenly someone picked them put them in jail, those are the people that comprehensive reform would do it. We are not proposing, for example, K-1 visa, which is a fiancé of the United States, like in the olden days, uh, uh, in the Filipino war, in the Korean war, if I'm a soldier, I fell in love with a Filipino girl, I could ask my best buddy and say, hey, you petition her over until I go home and marry my wife and I'll marry her. Nowadays, you can't do that. It's 90 days, same man. If you marry a different man, you're out. Those laws we propose, we keep. That's why to understand this issue, that's why I'm glad five of us are here, is to define what's the definition of being unauthorized, undocumented, illegal, whatever. You see? And you are right. We don't encourage them to come. We don't want them to come. We want our people to have jobs and pay for a house. What good is even making $7 when they can buy a house and close down a Chinese restaurant? And you are absolutely right. We don't encourage them. And we need the borders to be closed. Not close, but at least build walls so they don't come. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Hi. Um, don't disagree with anybody, uh, but I do want to kind of redirect the issue. The immigration issue always gets run, a, run into or hijacked by the illegal immigrant issue. Cleveland is a city that's struggling to stay alive. There are other cities that are being far more aggressive in attracting talent, sorry Richard, <laughs> immigrant talent, migrant talent. And Richard, you have a good, I'm really directing this at you, you've been to some different cities and could you tell people what other cities are doing? They, a number of them took our ideas, frankly, which we haven't been able to get implemented. Well, uh, this is Harry Weller, and, and uh, thanks, Harry, for that question. Harry is uh, uh, one of the leaders in a, in a movement here in, in Northeast Ohio to create an international welcome center that would help uh, uh, welcome, even attract, and integrate uh, immigrant uh, homeowners, families, uh, professionals, investors into our community um, to, to raise the opportunities for everyone here. We've been studying different cities uh, around the country that have these programs, and uh, I was in Louisville a couple weeks ago. They've got uh, uh, an initiative in their Chamber of Commerce uh, called the Greater Louisville uh, International Professional Group. 
Um, there's initiatives in Indianapolis and in Boston and Philadelphia. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, we need to keep reminding ourselves that immigrant is not a dirty word. Uh, it never made George Carlin's list of the seven dirty words you couldn't say on TV. So it's not a dirty word. And uh, whether they're lower skilled or high skilled, and I'd argue that uh, people working on the farms and, and agricultural, those are skilled jobs too. I mean, try to do that job for a day. Um, and what kind of skill and, and, and energy and, and, and heart you have to do those jobs every day. Um, we're talking about building an intercultural community. It's, we have room for everyone. We really do. And, and we don't need to have these artificial barriers between us. So um, in a city that, like Cleveland, used to have almost a million people in the inner city, in the city proper, we now have uh, probably under 400,000 uh, in the city. Um, we need something new. And the federal government could actually um, change the game here with, if we get into any discussions on comprehensive immigration law reform that could include special legislation for targeted immigration zones in the country. Um, and actually, that's what the chambers of commerce in the metropolitan region between Chicago and Pittsburgh have done. Um, we helped craft that policy out of the Greater Cleveland ch Chamber here for those other chambers. And the policy says, listen, immigration has been a driver and will be a driver in the Great Lakes states. Um, so you're right. I think it's a balanced discussion uh, on both sides. So how, how do we combine that with, you know, uh, what uh, Representative Combs has articulated about the concerns, uh, you know, let's say with the border and that impact? Or can we uh, I think meld we, that? I think we press the issue of national legislation, comprehensive immigration reform, get the individual states out of the process, close the border, and treat the folks that are here in a humane and sane way and give them a road map to citizenship. And the, the point being, too, is that, uh, and, and the agreement's here, the states shouldn't have to do this. But if the federal government doesn't act, the states have to. I welcome this lawsuit. You know, people look at me and think, why would you welcome this lawsuit? I'm not saying that I like it or think they did the right thing, but at least it puts the issue in front of all of us, pushes the issue. Uh, if, if the federal government wins, it takes the states out of it. If the federal government loses, I think you'll see some federal legislation fairly soon. So I think either way, yeah. the four of us win. All everybody in this room will win. Let's not just leave it here. And that will, that will be a catalyst to build upon. So I don't, I don't have a problem with the government suing Arizona. I don't like it, don't get me wrong. I'm a state guy. I'm from the state. I'm here to help you. Uh, <laughs> but, the, but the point being is, uh, this is what we need, and this could be the impetus. I don't th I'm willing to be part of the solution anytime, anywhere, anyhow. But my main goal is, you can't do it if you just leave that border open. As the gentleman said here, when is enough enough? One county, a thousand a day. Today at the uh, City Club of Cleveland, we've been listening to a Friday Forum panel discussion featuring Representative Courtney Combs, Attorney Richard Herman, Stanley Miller, Attorney Margaret Wong. We want to thank you all very much. We want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and this forum is now adjourned. For information on upcoming speakers or for podcasts of the City Club, go to cityclub.org.